and not rush to judgment and put people I can't unfairly you persecuted. Are, I, unfairly persecuted. Unfairly, we got people sir, who are we dead. have to be able to have a proper investigation into this. Senator Josh Hawley orders firing of Secret Service agents that failed during the Trump rally in Pennsylvania. So in this video, we're gonna break it all down. Welcome back to the Devory Darkens show. I am Devory Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this out to more people just like you and me. Senator Josh Hawley. This guy, he's young, he's bright, he's, he's really buttoned up, he's professional, and he does not slack when it comes to holding people accountable during these hearings. And the whole point of the hearing is to give the American people the answers they're looking for in regards to the failed assassination attempt on President Trump. And the last hearing that he was a part of was the acting Secret Service Director. Yes, you heard that correct. Acting, meaning the prior Secret Service Director, the one that was appointed by President Biden. She's gone. She's out of there. So the person who took her place, they're acting. They have not been professionally appointed yet. Um, he had to come in and do a hearing as well. Well, when he went in there, he absolutely got destroyed because his answers were not adding up and he was not willing to show how he was going to hold people accountable. So the point of this video is to break that down and show you some of these clips. So without further ado, let's play the first clip. Why is there not a Secret Service counter sniper on that roof? So, Senator Weir, um, when we post up, our, our is our methodology is to look out, look at things that can see in on our protectees uh, so that they can provide that coverage. But wh why is there not a, a Secret Service counter sniper there with clear line of sight? That roof has a clear line of sight to the former president. Why didn't you put a Secret Service counter sniper there? Uh, the Secret Service's counter sniper role is to neutralize those threats that are looking in on us. Uh, from where the protectee is, not necessarily uh, You think maybe position. you might want to revise that protocol in light of what happened here? Uh, they were protecting the principal, and I think in the- principal the, got shot. I understand that, sir. So do you and, think you might want to revise the protocol? Let me ask you this. Who was the lead site agent who made the decision to leave the AGR building completely outside of the security perimeter. Who was that? Senator, I cannot give you that name. This person is operational. They're still doing investigations. They're still doing protective visits. Have they been relieved of duty? Senator, uh, they have not been relieved their name, of duty. I know their name, by the way. Why have they not been relieved of duty? They are still cooperating, not only being interviewed by the FBI, but also by our Office of Professional Responsibility. And uh, we will let the facts of uh, the mission assurance and any further investigations play out. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Imagine being the active Secret Service director and having to step in and have to attend these hearings knowing that you probably don't know much either. I first have to explain this to you guys because it is important, the chain of command, right? Uh, obviously, you had uh, the Secret Service director, Kimberly Cheeto, right? She was appointed by President Biden. She doesn't know what the heck is going on. That operation is many levels below what she's focused on, right? So, you know, if you've got over 3,000 agents under your command, you're not always going to be focused on what every single agent is doing. That's why you have people under you that are in leadership positions that would know. That's just the way that it works in the military. It's the way it works in law enforcement. It's definitely the way that it works in the government as well, especially the Secret Service. However, the buck still stops with the director. So if there's an utter failure like there was with the failed assassination attempt of President Trump, she's got to be she's she's gone. Right. They have to be fired. So this brings us to the point I want to make about what we've seen so far, which is who is the person that told the Secret Service or local law enforcement not to cover that building? And if they did not say that, who is the person who failed to confirm that that building was being manned by a counter sniper team, right? So there, it's a lose-lose either way. You lose because you can't prove that you communicated that to local law enforcement, or you lose because you did communicate that to local law enforcement, but you just did not confirm that they followed through on the job. And when you're in a leadership position, there's something I learned in the military. It's a very nice quote, trust, but verify. I trust that you're gonna do your job, but I will verify that you did your job. Right. It makes the world of difference. 
Let's continue. Isn't the fact that a former president was shot, that a good American is dead, that other Americans were critically wounded, isn't that enough mission failure for you to say that the person who decided that that building should not be in the security perimeter probably ought to be stepped down? Senator, I think you're using the word decided, and I think we need to allow the the investigation play out to include... So who, okay, so a, a who, dis, who, who did make the decision then? If it wasn't the lead uh, site agent, who made the decision not to put that in the security perimeter? Senator, you're zeroing in on one particular agent. I want to find out exactly yeah. what was the entire decision process. So I think yeah. I want to be neutral and make sure that we get to the bottom of it and interview everybody in order to determine if there was more than one person who perhaps exercised bad judgment. Well, sure. My question is, why don't you relieve everybody of duty who made bad judgment? So yeah, you're right, I am zeroing in on somebody. I'm trying to find somebody who's accountable here. And we so will. you're telling me that the person who made the decision not to include this in the perimeter has not been relieved of duty. What about the person who's in charge of the interoperability of radio frequencies between local law enforcement and, and Secret Service? Has that person been relieved of duty? Uh, no, Senator, because interoperability is a challenge, uh, is a greater challenge than just one person. On that day, we had a counterpart system uh, it failed As the person who decided, who made the decision to send Donald Trump onto stage knowing that you had a security situation, has that person been relieved of duty? No, sir, they haven't. Has the person who decided not to pull the former president off of stage when you knew that, in your words, the locals were working a serious security situation, has that person been relieved of duty? Uh, no, sir. Again, I refer you back to my original answer that we are investigating this through a mission assurance and as opposed to zeroing in on one, what more do or you need to investigate to, to know exactly what the what decision making process was? What more do you need to investigate was? to know that there were critical enough failures that some individuals ought to be held accountable? I mean, what more do you need to know? What I need to know is exactly what happened, and I need my investigators to do their job. Okay, so you guys seen that, and and you see where Senator Josh Hawley is going, right? He's like, okay, listen, if you don't want to give me the overall person in charge during that day, the overall person in charge of that operation, you don't want to give me that name, which they do already know that name, by the way. And let, let's be a little honest, half of this is really trying to hold people accountable, and the other half is obviously putting on a show for the American people. Like, I, I'm not naive, and I hope you aren't either. Uh, you know, the, the they hold these committees, usually nothing ever comes of it. Now, the uh, Secret Service director did resign. So, you know, I guess it did work in, in a sense. Um, but let, let's go back to his main thing that he's pushing at right now. Okay, so the person overall in charge, you don't want to give me their name and you don't want to fire them. What about the second person in charge? What about the person in charge of communications between Secret Service and local law enforcement? Why hasn't that person been fired? But at this level, when you're talking about uh, the, the Secret Service, which went from being all about safety to being all about inclusion and running based on politics, yeah, the, the chances of them truly firing everybody isn't really a, uh, a reasonable expectation. Now, what may happen, there will be heads that roll because let me tell you something. The Secret Service Director or the former Secret Service Director, Kimberly Cheeto, she resigned. So if she resigned, there's probably some other people who either resigned, which we're not going to hear their names, or they have already been moved out or kicked out or have been told, hey, by the end of the year, if Trump gets elected, you're out of here, right? That's probably what, what's happening. But the bottom line is heads have to roll. When there is a utter failure in your operation, the only way sometimes meaningful change will happen when a dramatic action is taken. So if a dramatic failure has occurred, then a dramatic response is necessary. And that means the director is gone. The deputy director should be gone. Whoever was in charge of that day should be gone. Whoever was in charge of communication should be gone. Because if you don't show people what happens when they fail, it, people aren't, they're, they're human beings. They're not going to take it as seriously as in, man, did you guys know back in 2024, they relieved everybody from the top down. That right there is a dramatic shift in a culture because it's a dramatic action. But let's continue and see what else this guy has to say. You're asking me, Senator, to completely make a rush to judgment about somebody failing. I acknowledge 
This was a failure of the Is Secret it not Service. prima facie that somebody has failed? A former president was sir, shot. Sir, this could have been our Texas school book depository. I have lost sleep over that for the last 17 days, been just like you have. somebody to and I will tell you, Senator. I will tell you, Senator, that I will not rush to judgment, that people will be held accountable, and I will do so with integrity and not rush to judgment and put people I can't unfairly believe that you persecuted. Are, I, unfairly persecuted. Unfairly, we people sir. Who are we dead. have to be able to have a proper investigation into this, Senator. You said earlier that you've got to make sure that your protocols are followed, and unless there's a protocol violation, people wouldn't be disciplined. I would just say to you, I don't really care that much about your protocols. I think if your protocols don't provide for the fact that when a former president is shot, when an American is killed, when other rally goers, innocent people who just showed up on the day, when they are shot at and critically wounded, if that isn't a protocol violation, prima facie, you should revise your protocols. Senator, I think this is where you and I agree. This was a failure, and we will get to the bottom of it. Well, I hope you're going to do something about it. Let me ask you something else. <laughs> oh, man, that, I laugh every time because that's just the, the exchange is crazy, right? Um, and he it, look, people should be upset. And the persecution is deserved. The whole purpose of Secret Service is protection. And if the protection breaks down, your purpose has been compromised. So the persecution, I think uh, they should not be complaining about that. They, they, they shouldn't. I remember they put out a statement talking about stop attacking the female Secret Service agents. Well, don't put female Secret Service agents in that position to begin with. Right. It's a cause and effect. And so I, I find it funny that he's like, well, I don't want anybody to be unfairly persecuted. Someone died that day. Let's not talk about being unfairly persecuted. OK, just because of what is being said in the news or on social media, that doesn't mean someone's life is over. OK, someone's life did end that day because you guys failed to do your job. So let's talk about that. Now, here's another point that I do want to make. He keeps pushing back. The, acted, the acting Secret Service director keeps saying, well, I want the investigation to be completed and I don't want my uh, uh, agents to have to worry about anything. Listen, if someone died under Secret Service protection, right, and a former president almost died under your protection, I do not care about your protocols. I do not care about your process. Those people should be suspended at a minimum. They shouldn't even be working right now. That's the crazy part about it. But actions speak louder than words. We should be hearing, yes, uh, Senator, the lead agent who was in charge of that site has been suspended. The person who was in charge of communications has been suspended. Uh, the person who was in charge of this security operation over here has been suspended. Absolutely. And it should also, it should also be said, that counter sniper team that took out the shooter, they are going to be rewarded because it goes both ways. The people who did take action that day and did their job to a T, they should be recognized. And the people who did not do their job to a T, they got to go. It's called true accountability. But this is the problem with our government. Accountability is kryptonite. And that's why growth cannot occur. That's why culture goes into the trash and trust is non-existent with the American people. As I wrap up this video, I want to say this to you guys. Pay attention to the mindset of the acting Secret Service director, because a lot of people in your life or even people you might work with will do things like this. They will not take true responsibility. They will not be too keen on being held accountable, right? They will make excuses. They will be too afraid to hold their own friends or their own coworkers or their own subordinates accountable. And when we're enabling people's failures and their inability to do the right thing. When we encourage that behavior, we get bad outcomes. Do not be the person who's celebrating someone coming in last, who's celebrating person not doing what they're supposed to do. Okay. If their purpose in life is to protect the president of the United States and they fail to do that, there should be nothing to talk about except people being placed on suspension at a minimum or being relieved of duty. So that's my mindset. What is yours? What do you think about Senator Josh Hawley and his questions to the active Secret Service director? What do you think about the answers that he was getting? What do you think about the explanation? And what do you think about this whole hearing and how nobody's really been held accountable and it's already been at least three weeks? 
Like what's what's really going on? Well, answer this and more in the comments section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.